So for the second one, what we're going to be doing with that one, again, I've got the board underneath. So this is just a piece of cardboard that's quite thick. I have got some kitchen foil, some tissue paper, some baking paper, PVA, multiple acrylic. So I've got here some gold, um, some cadmium yellow, cerulean blue and ultramarine blue, and then there's some black as well. I've got my glue gun and I've got a card to apply it and I've got a little bit of water as well and a spray bottle which is always handy to have so that you can manipulate the consistency of the paint. You will also find having a container to mix up some colours in and dilute them down so we can change the consistency very handy. So I guess let's get on with this one. Right, first of all we're going to do the kitchen foil which I'm sure probably quite a few of you have seen on YouTube. It's great. We're going to combine it, like I said, with other things and make it interesting. So I'm taking my kitchen foil and I'm going to rip it into smaller pieces. You can rip it into any shape you want. Any size you want. You might find that the bigger the surface you want to cover, the bigger the pieces of the kitchen paper. Now, the next thing you want to do is kind of crumple it up, make it interesting, then pull it out. You don't necessarily have to crumple it very hard, but you might want to do some where you don't crumple and some where you do. So that you can see what happens. Because art is about playing and investigating and problem solving and exploring things. Don't worry about the consequences about having fun and seeing what happens. Now I'm going to take my card and my PVA glue and I'm going to start putting down I'm going to do like a circle quite popular these days so if I put the glue down in a circle form and I use my card to clear it out it's relatively quick and easy like that. And rip this down. Get that. The trick is you do want it crinkled. You do not want this, the paper to be smooth. It does need you can push it down really hard, don't get me wrong. And you can overlap one bit with another, but it needs to be thoroughly stuck down. So use loads of glue. And it does need to have some texture in it. So if you've got a piece that hasn't got texture like this one, and you stick it down, you might want to stick it in and then scrunch it up into the surface. Like so. Pour some more glue. Down like that. And apply it from downward pressure. Really, you've got to make sure this is really covered in glue. It's so easy to miss a bit, and then you end up with problems once you start putting the paint down. Nothing like that. Okay, great. a little bit more. piece of card to work on. Knowing how out of control this can get. No, it probably actually isn't when I get control of it, you're right. Okay, and you can see I'm just working down underneath. A little bit more down here. Now you can see already my circle is turning more into a spiral. But don't worry about it, just go with it. It's no biggie. Now, once you've got that down, you want to put some glue on top and make sure it's thoroughly sealed down on the, well, the edges particularly with this technique. Now you can 
to use a brush, you don't need to use a card. I'm just being really lazy and I find a card does it really fast. A little bit more just off the end here. So it really looks like a good old spiral. Gonna glue this to my sketch board, but anyway, we'll worry about that later on. So now that I've got that down, then I need to look at moving on to the next stage. Which is gonna be building up tissue paper texture. So I take some tissue paper and again rip it up. And I'm going to start working this into my natural forming shape. And this time, because everything's soaking wet with PVA, you should find that it goes on fairly easy. You will find that the tissue paper does give you a slightly different result once you start layering on the colours. But you do want it crinkled, you don't want it to be too smooth. Okay, and you don't really want to cover all your kitchen um, foil. You want to start working beyond the kitchen foil as well. So you're going to have a balance of the two. Don't feel like you have to cover the whole piece of card either. You can just do it on certain patches. It's completely up to you and where you want to do this and how much. Now the tissue is a little bit more fragile than um, the kitchen foil, therefore you can see how I'm using my fingers to work the glue into it and to build the direction and texture within it. Now what I've got here as well is I've got some baking paper and I'm going to throw that into the mix as well. Well, I have one technique when you can have five. <laughs> so let's bring this in. Now with the baking powder, paper, there, she says baking powder and um, paper, you do want to scrunch it in your hands before putting it down on the surface of the card, or you might find you have problems. If you find that you put too much down, so you can see there, I just ripped off a bit. And that's the nice thing with the baking paper. You can smooth it out and rip it off. Let's so take that up. Just stick it down. Now down here I feel like it looks better with a bit of tin foil. So I am gonna put in a bit of tin foil. There is no point where you're too late to do one of the other techniques. You can you know bring in other mix it up. You don't have to do it in this order by any means. Let's see that. 
there I'm just working that in the trick though is to make sure that you've got a decent quantity of PVA on top of the tin foil so that it really does seal it in you can if you want to at that point go over the paper as well and flatten that down you see here I think I've lost a bit of texture so I'm just gonna build that up probably get a bit more tissue paper and work that in Right, so let's just make sure everything is covered in glue and that it's all sealed in. Everything is stuck down and isn't going to move. I'll start putting paint on top of it once it's dry. And then we need to wait for that to dry and move on to the next stage. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so back to the one that was going to be a circle and has now turned into a, a spirally wave. Not exactly part of the plan, but the way it goes sometimes. So the next stage is using the glue gun. So I've got a glue gun here. I've got some acrylics. I've also got some water spray. I've taped it down a little bit because you know what it's like with these things, they move around. And we're going to go in with the glue gun and add again more texture to the surface. Let's see if my glue gun's hot. Nope, I need to just wait a moment. Right, so now my glue gun's hot, I'm going to start working into this. And you'll find that you can glue gun in, she says, once that end bit's heated up a bit more, some very more, well, very fine patterns. The acrylics will paint on top of the glue gun, so we're going to be putting that in to use the colour. It's up to you on kind of how much you want to use the glue gun and, and where and the type of shapes. At the moment I'm just following around with that curve that I've generated so it exaggerates the idea of the spiral and the movement. But you could be shaping anything you like onto this. So now that this is settled and dried, like I said, it does it fairly fast um, with a glue gun, I'm going to put some paint on and start seeing what happens. Now, now the best way of working with this is usually working thinner layers of paint up to thicker layers of paint and also working dark to light or light to dark. You can go either way, but don't kind of go mid-tones first. So let's put down some gold because personally I think you can never go wrong with too much gold. I'm going to put some gold out in an old lid. Then I'm going to get a sponge, and this is a sponge that's had a bit of a hard life. I use it for printmaking. Cut off the end. I'm going to take some of that gold, and I'm going to start working that into the surface of my texturised piece of card. You can, if you wanted to, spray it with a little bit of water and then tilt it and get the paint to run. Or you can just work it on with sponging. Personally, I prefer sponging. I find it easier to control and to get the thickness of the paint. You're going to find that you'll need to layer this up as a technique. So it's good to kind of go all over the first layer as a base with a colour that you rather like and then work up. Uh, and, and make it interesting. Right, so you can see I've got this kind of coverage. I'm going to go in with something a little bit darker now. So let's go in with um, maybe a, a darker blue. Oh, ultramarine. It's complete of you. What colours you want to go in with? As it's gold, gold will look great with any colour. So if you want to play it safe. Going for that base gold colour will definitely do it. Now you can see with the sponging, I'm really playing around with mixing on the wet surface. Building that idea of a spiral and having the tone go up and down on the surface as well as the textures playing. 
obviously you could do this when the gold is a bit more dry but if you want the gold to make a little bit more of a metallic -y shade mix it will do think about how you're applying your sponge and how wet your sponge is you might find that you need to dry it off or clean it up so that you're not getting huge amounts of cross contamination where you don't want it now I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to work that up with more shades on top of that the more you work up the more interesting you'll find it gets at this stage it's very early to kind of gather the direction that the artwork is going in swing backwards and forwards between a little bit more abstract and a little bit more kind of realistic if you're looking at whirlpools or something like that. Right so I've worked up this, worked up the darks really and then I'm going to go in with a smaller stiffer brush just to do the kind of strong highlights. Um, let me find a brush. Right, so I've got some white acrylic just to give it some structure back because at the moment it's very dark so you want it a very kind of dry brush so that you can go over and, and work into the textures Right, so it gives you basically a, a quick simple lay down of using this technique. Now let's go back to the other and finish that off with the painting stage. <laughs> 